Take one. <laughs> Hi, Jocelyn. We are here with Jocelyn Collins this afternoon, and we're going to interview her about her greens cooking and Experience. about her <laughs> other um, thoughts about food access in the neighborhood and community. So thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, first of all, let's hear about your greens. Like, what? What's special about your greens, Jocelyn? And do you have stories around them or what? No, I learned to, I, I grew up on greens and uh, mostly collards and mustards, but I've learned to like turnips and I like them mixed. And uh, I think it was a staple, maybe just because of uh, the vegetable content and it was a cheaper a meal mm -hmm. and I've learned that it goes well with smoked meats pork turkey chicken whatever you want and I've even learned to make them vegetarian <laughs> <laughs> so uh, nothing special about them they taste good yeah. where did you grow up I grew up here in st. Paul mm -hmm. in the Rondo area okay. neighborhood so did your mom and grandma teach you how to make greens, or did you just kind of? I, uh, I was the, um, the cook. I, went high school, tenth through twelfth uh, grade, I was usually the first one home, and I think the responsibility just became mine to be home and start dinner and cook dinner, and both my parents cooked, so I learned recipes from both of them and then it became that I would just be preparing the whole meal every night so that was my job cool. no not so cool when you're in high school yeah, <laughs> and you don't want to come straight home to start the dinner and then have it finished by 5 30 yeah. yeah but it worked out I grew from it I learned how to cook that's cool and I know how to do it fast, because after I had kids, you learn how to do that fast. Mm. What other foods do you like to cook? Um, actually, chicken's a good one. I don't like baked chicken, but I do love fried, and I learned how to do that well. <laughs> but uh, I like all food, you can tell. <laughs> but I do. I. There's very few foods I don't like. Eggplant is one, because maybe I don't know how to cook it. I think that's what it is, but I didn't grow up on it, so I'm not really fond of it. But everything else I don't have a problem with. <coughs> cool. So, mm -hmm. um, so do you usually get your greens from the garden? Or yes. So or do you have a big garden? Or? This year, yes, and last year, I worked uh, CSP's gardens and maintained them and the one that was on Victoria. And uh, the one that's here on this property, I didn't really maintain, I just took from. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I grow my own, I have my own garden where I live. Mm -hmm. So I grow um, staples like that, something that can grow throughout the summer and not, you know, Everybody grows the same thing, tomatoes, cucumbers, and I steered away from that. I've learned what to put in the garden with what so that one plant doesn't overtake the whole garden, like cucumbers and squash. They're a big space hog. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And this year I grew sweet potatoes, and they were cute, and they tasted good. That was my first time. I think I'm going to try that. Uh, next year 2017 because we are going to be experimenting with what to put in the garden that would yield all summer into the fall you know so there probably won't be any tomatoes in that one or cucumbers or something like that but cabbages that uh, take up unlimited space and greens um, like I said, pit greens and yeah, things. Hmm. yeah, and uh, turnips, like you said, turnip greens. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, and potatoes, onions, things that grow underground, garlic. Mm -hmm. So that will be one garden. So I'm in the process of putting it on paper now, what is gonna go in these gardens. Mm -hmm. So what do you think um, would help you with the gardening? Do you need more space or do you need more equipment? Oh, you can always use space and the more space is more work and the equipment is always good. <laughs> <laughs> You know, using minimal tools. I mean, it's doable, and I've done it. But yeah, it, it helps to have different tools to uh, to break the ground, to clear it out, to keep it weeded. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking before about the space out here. Mm -hmm. and, um, can you tell us about that? How what what you feel about that? <laughs> the space here at 501 Dale was quite an experience this year, 2016, because uh, Metric uh, built the, the gardens and they hauled dirt and we planted and we grew and we grew and then when everything was grown, the government came in and put a no trespassing sign on the lot so people were not free to harvest what had been grown. And I think it's sad that they waited till everything was grown to put the sign out there because they had to be watching it too. And I didn't understand, you know, the meaning of that, but they had no conscience about doing it. I mean, but we picked it anyway because we grew it and we were going to just let it watch and that, that didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of wasted food. That's where my fight with the government is, yeah, it is a serious food issue here in this state. I imagine it's everywhere, but I can only talk about Minnesota and how they don't help. We have a SNAP program, which is being cut. It's not very big for Americans, but they are, um, they have no problem giving food stamps and food handouts to people who are not American born. They have not gotten citizenship yet. So we have a lot of seniors this past year still eating pet food, you know, canned cat food and dog food, and uh, the government handing them a little uh, certificate for seven dollars worth of groceries and you cannot buy meat and milk and bread for seven dollars uh, the next allotment i heard was 16. Uh, that's what i was offered 16 dollars and i they had no conscience just telling me this is all you qualify for when i'm on social security and then i see people in the same room getting a thousand dollars in food stamps you know i don't know how many children they have that's not my business but you can hand over money to people who are not born and raised here and struggling and we have plenty food in this country so there should be no one getting old food and garbage but we're doing it and i don't know how to stop it if anyone has any suggestions I will be on that committee with you and just contact me. <laughs> well, that sort of brings up, we don't have control over a lot of that, but what do we have control over that we could help out with in this community, do you think? I think just having these gardens, these neighborhood gardens, um, I've noticed more children being active, and I, I like that idea of giving them something to do and something to be accountable for, something to be proud of that they, that they did. And also it gives them a, a better outlook on nutrition. It gives them a different outlook so they don't need so many carbs or sugars or, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it, once you get children involved in growing their own food, they, they tend to like it, like eating it and like growing it. So. Mm -hmm. I think more neighborhood gardens uh, will help 
you know, teaching teaching each other our skills, what what to grow in with what, and you know, utilizing your space to the to the complete, you know, as well as you can. Mm -hmm. Can I ask what seems to like what seems to work well to get people involved in the garden? Well, conversation. You know, introducing yourself and being friendly and asking, do you want a chance to help? And a lot of people say no, but then there are those that say yes. And I think that if we reach two or three, they'll reach two or three. Mm -hmm. And then we can just keep growing like that. Children tend to like the outdoors. There are some who don't like to get their hands dirty. That's why they have gloves. But once they uh, they get into it, it grows on them. And you know, then they get excited about what can they grow, and you know, yeah. and that that's always a plus. Then they'll take it home and tell their parents, "We need a garden here, and this is what I want to grow." And and we even started from seed. I really embrace that, starting from seed and having a little uh, grow house, you know, right in your in your home. And uh, yeah, I found that those plants are hardier, but then we don't want to get into uh, the corn thing and Monsanto. And then I get sick all over again. It's like, why do people want to control so much of people's livelihood? You know, why would you make the farmers not use their own seed and reseed, you know? They sell this this corn, these corns that don't uh, re, what do you call that, rejuvenate or they don't, they can't grow. One year is all you get and before we, we never did it like that. But I don't know why the government is giving so much control to things that are not for people. They are not for us, so who are they for? I mean, we make up this country. And I really wish people would start coming out of their homes and using their voice and seeking out, you know, what's going on so that they can say, I'm gonna get on board and help with that. I, I think that's a wrong policy. Yeah, policies are all messed up and I don't think they're gonna get any better because we're not speaking up, we're accepting. And the few that do speak up, the voice is not big enough because either people are afraid or they don't want to take the time or it's all kinds of things. So, so I'm, I'm curious, this is kind of a big leap, but this is one of the reasons I'm excited about something like the Greens Meal, because I feel like these are moments to come together about food. So I'm curious, I don't know if you have thoughts about how do we get people to talk more about these things and then to be effective acting together. To keep bringing it up, to keep opening up the door, I think. And like I said, if two walk through the door next time, maybe they'll bring two. And that's how we can do it. And the children, take the children, opening it up to them like at school and in plots like the Maxfield, you know, and Pilgrim Baptist Church. That, you know, it's in a neighborhood. So the kids go by there and they see that. And if they see other kids working, they ask. What are you doing? How can I do it? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? You know, and yeah, I've seen a lot of gardens this year run by uh, kids, and that's encouraging for me. This is part of, I love this idea of the like two or three at a time, because I've been thinking about the greens recipes partly as like the recipes for social change. Like, yes. like, like and because we don't often get a chance to talk about why, and we, you're right, we do in the gardens, but when we come together and eat food, we usually, I think we hesitate partly because we don't want to call each other's food choices into mm -hmm, question, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but to be able to have that space to say, like, here's why to do it this way. We're building community. Yeah, I think it's a great community builder. So, I'm excited about the 217 growing year. <laughs> and so, like I said, we're, we're back there planning uh, our gardens. What, 
you know, what's going to grow, what grows with what, you know, carrots and greens, potatoes, those are all good because they grow under, you know, underground, I mean, meaning the turnips, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, the others are just space fillers. <laughs>